Meet the man who ran the width of Ireland in one day. Meet the man who's running for president on a platform of marijuana and hyena testicles. And meet Qantas, an airline that is asking executives to work as baggage handlers. These are the weird stories for Wednesday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian. I have three strange weird news segments from around the world for you today. For your ears only, and whoever's sitting next to you, a man ran the width of Ireland in a single day, fueled by Guinness. His name is Robert Pope. He is a British marathon champion, and he has just run the width of Ireland in less than 24 hours, becoming the first person to accomplish this feat, running the whole Width of the island in a day. I didn't realize Ireland was so small. Robert Pope ran from Galway City in Ireland's west coast to the capital Dublin in just 23 hours and 39 minutes. Well, 20 minutes under the 24-hour mark. That's, That's quite a feat. Another aspect that makes this an amazing accomplishment is that Robert Pope is only 44 years old. That's impressive. Uh, it's a total of 131 miles, 211 kilometers, Uh, along this run from Galway City to Dublin. And it says here, Robert uh, drank a pint of Guinness in Galway before finishing with another one at the end of the route in Dublin on Sunday. So he had a Guinness to start, and then he peed it all over his legs as he ran, and then (laughs) later on, (laughs) can't stop for a bathroom break, you just got to pee on yourself. I've seen these marathon runners just pee all over themselves. It's been occasional pooping too, not going to (laughs) lie. Okay, so then he gets to Dublin, has another pint. I would as well. I love Guinness. Oh, I love Guinness so much, so much. Now, if I was running this marathon, I would have DM'd all of the cool pubs along that route, that 130-mile route. Route? Route? Who cares? And then I would ask them, can I get a free pint along the way? Of course they're going to give me a free pint. I mean, unless they find out I'm an American and maybe they'll just give me a free punch. Punch in the groin! Speaking afterwards, uh, the man in our story, the Guinness drinking marathon runner named Robert, he's, he was in high spirits, he says here, if slightly worse for the wear. He joked around to the BBC that despite the grueling feet, he could still struggle up the stairs of his accommodation. Robert's from Liverpool. He decided to tackle the mammoth route on something of a whim a little over two months ago. How about that? A whim. I get a lot of whims, but not to run the entire width of a country. My whim is usually, oh man, I think I got some goat cheese in the fridge. Yeah, I'm going to go take that and smear it on a banana and eat it and see what happens. (laughs) Those are my whims. I don't go, yeah, you know what? I'm going to run from here to Florida. Let's just see if I can do it. Now this guy, on the other hand, not only is he a big time achiever, well above his age grade, he is somewhat of a supporter of wildlife. He used this opportunity to raise funds for the World Wildlife Foundation because he gives a damn about the animals and the spammables. He was asked by the media how he prepared for this Guinness-fueled romp across Ireland, to which he replied, Well, I was meant to do an eight-week training program, but um, then a music festival got in the way of that. So I went to that. I was also working quite a bit, so it was, maybe I trained for only five weeks, but yeah, you know, I'm happy with that. With the training, it was sufficient. I made it. Yeah. I got pissed too along the way, didn't I? I, Yeah. Now, before you guys all think you can down a beer and then run a hundred miles, you got to be in good shape. This guy, Pope, it says, is an elite ultra marathon runner. Not just a marathon runner, an ultra marathon runner. I don't know what that means, but it sounds way cooler. And this guy has made his name reveling in challenges, um, marathon challenges that range from the unconventional to the extraordinary. In 2018, as a matter of fact, he paid homage to the film Forrest Gump by running more than 15,000 miles crossing the United States. Can you imagine that? This guy just ran across the another country. Ireland must have seemed like a breeze after running the whole United States. It took him 422 days, it says. And he wrote a book about it called Becoming Forest, One Man's Epic Run Across America. (laughs) Wow, this guy really is into running. Yes, I run a country 
drink a beer, and then I write a book. A presidential candidate is campaigning on marijuana and hyena testicles. This is taking place in Kenya, one of the only places you can campaign on hyena testicles. Yeah, I mean, you say these things anywhere else during your campaign, and people they probably lock you up for being a wackadoo. What's this guy's name? George Wajakaya. Wajakaya? Wajakaya. What a great name. Wajakaya. He is behind the two front runners. Uh, so he's in third place in the election. This is for the president of Kenya. He's part of the Ganja tribe. The Ganja tribe. Wow. This is great. I support the Ganja tribe. I want people making decisions who smoke a little bit more ganja than the ones currently making the decisions in our political landscapes. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> Be a little bit more chill, bro. Chill. I don't want my political candidates smoking too much cannabis because then you get in a position where they're like, yeah, you know, I know, I heard about the unemployment, man, but we gotta really save those dolphins and trees, man. Have you seen the trees? I can hear them screaming and crying when I walk past, man. <laughs> so, somewhere in between, I don't give a shit about the people and save the dolphins. Somewhere in between there would be great. All right, let's learn a little bit about this candidate, Wakajamaka, Wakajamoki, Wajakoja, Wajakaja, Wajakaya. Got it. Took me a Wow. I think I did it quicker the first time. As Kenya's two leading presidential hopefuls vie for votes in the upcoming election, a third candidate has emerged on a campaign of marijuana and hyena testicles to help solve the country's economic problems. Well, I can see how marijuana might solve your economic problems because you can tax the crap out of that, right? And everybody loves it. What's with the hyena testicles, though? How is that going to solve your country's economic problems? What's well, going on? Are the hyena testicles stealing all your jobs over there? Well, George Wakaja, Wajakaja, Wajakaya, come on, man. Wajakaya has promised to erase the country's debt with his ganja solution. He's got a ganja solution, and this has attracted some younger members of the electorate, many saying... That conventional politicians in their country have failed to tackle corruption, inflation, and unemployment. Wajakaya is a grave digger turned law professor. He's got about 2% of the votes, but he could have some say in the election if he endorses one of the front runners or takes votes from another. During his campaign trail, he's promised to wipe out Kenya's $70 billion debt by establishing a medical cannabis industry and exporting animal parts to China as well, where he says hyena testicles are considered a delicacy. So his solution, grow a crap load of cannabis, right? Other solution, take the testicles off a lot of the animals over there and sell them to China. All right. I'm kind of on board with the first one. I don't know enough to make a judgment on the second one. It sounds crazy on the on the face of it because, uh, well, I mean, even if you follow through and it could solve your issue, now you've totally endangered an animal. I mean, I don't know. Are hyenas that important? Maybe. I definitely uh, applaud his ambition. You know, the guy goes from a grave digger to running for president of the country. Uh, here's a quote from him. These politicians... They have helicopters. They have money. They have painted cars. I don't even have a single poster. Not one. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> he doesn't have a poster for his campaign. I'm going to send this guy a couple bucks and a, uh, <laughs> and a pre-roll. Uh, I love how he says, they have painted cars. <laughs> what is your, your car doesn't have any paint, man? Is that the sign of wealth? Uh, this, if you, I, I want to be wealthy enough to have my car painted. That's what that's what I'm shooting for. As far as inculcating marijuana into the presidential role, he dreams of smoking marijuana in the president's office, he says. We shall go to state house and smoke it. Smoke that marijuana. Smoke it all around to remove those colonial impurities. Oh, this dude really has the ganja solution. I think he's onto something. Sadly though, he has such a low budget. Not only does he not have a poster, but 
his rallies are very low budget as well. Basically, his rallies involve him showing up at a market unannounced, blaring loud reggae music from his car, smoking marijuana, and pitching his candidacy to anyone who'll stop and look at him. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> oh, this guy. I support this guy, man. The only thing that would concern me about a presidential candidate that was on the ganja trip would be that he would be susceptible to bribes as well. You know, you show up with a tray of brownies. Hey, I made some wink, wink brownies for the president. <laughs> if you could just approve this pharmaceutical patent that I have here in my pocket, that would be very helpful. Mainstream news got you stressed. Maybe you live in Florida. Life can be overwhelming, guys, and stressful symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless and tired all the time. Maybe you're just burned out, my friend. In those times, it's important to talk to a professional who can help determine what's causing the stress in your life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and live chat therapy sessions. It's more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Weird AF News listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Weird Weird AF. That's betterhelp.com slash weird AF. And good luck with your mental health. Good luck with your life, man. An airline has asked its executives to work as baggage handlers. The airline is Qantas. Qantas is an Australian airline. They asked their senior executives to work as baggage handlers for three months as they try to tackle an acute labor shortage. Three months of loading bags. I think that's good for an executive. You know, you want to work the lower positions. That way, by the time, you know, you're at the high position, you can kind of have some empathy for the people that work below you. A lot of times these executives, you know, they're hired from another place or they just go right into the executive position out of college, this sort of thing. You get those, you know. There is also nepotism in industries. We can't deny that. So you'd imagine some of these executives, they have no connection to you know, in this instance, someone that works down below as a baggage handler, someone that takes the tickets. I think this is a good thing for the company. Uh, the firm's head of operations is looking for at least 100 volunteers, 100 executives to volunteer to work at Sydney and Melbourne airports. Well, that's a little ambitious. I mean, I don't know if 100 executives are going to volunteer to do this crap. <laughs> Maybe you get 10. Uh, what are some of the tasks? Well... Uh, loading, unloading bags, of course. Driving vehicles to move luggage around airports as well. Looks like it's basically baggage-related duties. Uh, and from what I've seen of the executives at companies, they don't look like they're in the kind of shape that could load and unload bags for eight hours a day. That's just my opinion. Maybe in Australia, the executives take care of themselves. It says here, like much of the global airline industry, Qantas is struggling to resume its services as borders reopen. You guys know the deal. I covered a story about how many bags have been lost. Ooh, boy, it's an epidemic of bag misplacement. So Qantas needs people to help them out. They've asked their managers and executives to work in the baggage handling roles for three to five days a week in shifts of either four or six hours a day per shift. Wow, they've really asked them to to do this on top of their other job, which leads me to believe that executives don't really do that much during the day, right? What do you guys do? Get on a couple Zoom meetings and then that's it. <laughs> Go back to the golf course. Qantas has tried this in the past. They say, as they have done in the past during busy periods, around 200 head office staff have helped at airports during peak travel periods since Easter. So they've already had success with executives volunteering. There is a physical requirement to be able to move suitcases weighing as much as 32 kilograms each. That's what the applicant is going to be expected to do. As they and other airlines attempt to get back on track, as measures to slow the spread of COVID-19 have eased around the world, Qantas and other major airlines have struggled to resume services at the scale that was seen before the pandemic. And my question is, who is flying around everywhere right now? I mean, have you seen the prices of these airline tickets? Who can afford to go anywhere? <laughs> I'm just baffled that people are still trying to fly right now. You've seen the airport situation? Have you read the headlines about the missing bags and all the other crap that's happening at these airports? Two-hour waits to get through TSA? And people are still like, yep. I'm going to pay twice as much as I usually pay to have this kind of airport experience. Are you out of your mind?
<laughs> Come on. <sighs> you know, I postponed my trip back home to Boston, which I usually do in August, September, because I'm not going to deal with I'm not going to pay twice as much to deal with that. And then maybe I get my bag when I arrive. Maybe, you know, that's a dice roll. Guys, I know there's a thing called travel season and it comes up every year, but you don't have to participate in, quote, travel season every year. You can take a year off or two. <laughs> okay, it's not the end of the world. Or is it? Yay! You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. Hello, and thank you for listening to this episode of Weird AF News. It's the Wednesday episode. I appreciate you getting all the way to the end. I'm so proud of you. I appreciate your time, so I'll keep this very, very brief. I hope you're keeping cool out there. It's a brutal summer, and so uh, take care of yourself. I'm dealing with that with a, well, I'm in a closet, of course, and I have a wet rag around the back of my neck and an ice-cold cold brew right next to my right foot ready to go at moment's notice when i need to, when i need to take a poll guys taking a poll guys every time you hear me pause i'm taking a poll guys a pull of my cold brew <laughs> hey hey if you want to support me and what i'm doing here you can uh, go to weirdafnews.com and uh, there's some ways you can do that you can submit an article you can write me a re- review or you can click on buy jonesy a coffee right on the website and buy me a couple coffees or you can join the patreon and be an ongoing supporter and get your name on the closet wall that's pretty cool right um, you can also do something that costs nothing but a little bit of your time just tell a friend about weird af news recommend it i'd, re- I'd appreciate that so very much uh, lastly i appreciate you and we'll chat tomorrow shall we okay you down i thought you'd be